So today we are working on my Nissan Sephiro, which if you guys aren't familiar with this car, this is basically a four-door S13. Came factory with an RB20. So I got this car a couple years ago and some months back I decided I wanted to build it into my version of the ultimate street drift car. And what I mean by that is a car that's comfortable to drive on the street, nice to drive on the street, but is also a really solid drift car. Now that is a, kind of a tough world to balance, but we're doing the best we can at it. So we took the RB20 out, put a K24 Honda motor in it. And the reason is because these motors are super plentiful. They're super cheap. There's tons of aftermarket support for them. They make great power. They're very reliable. It's just a really good overall option and it's easy to find parts for you don't have to track down a part from overseas for a motor that was never made here uh, We've also got a BMW ZF trans and we did a ton of custom fab work, you know custom exhaust V-mount intercooler setup intercooler piping intake expansion tank, etc We put a standalone Hall Tech ECU in it got it all wired up got it running the only thing stopping us from driving it is we're just missing some lines and fittings that we have on order to finish up the oil lines and the coolant lines. Once that's done, we can drive it. But since we're waiting on those, we might as well knock out uh, some other projects that we've got on the chopping block. So the first thing I want to dive into is building a custom catch can to go in this back corner here. Now, we definitely have the room to just throw a normal catch can on here, but the theme of this build is kind of building everything to perfectly suit the car and fit and all that stuff. So why not build a custom catch can to kind of match the expansion tank here? And then on top of that, once we have the catch can done, we get the lines in, we can plumb it all at one time. So if I'm being completely honest, I really just want to do another fun fab project. That has been the most enjoyable part of this build. And this is really kind of the last one. So I want to get it knocked out. So first and foremost, we have to uh, kind of come up with a basic design with some CAD. So I'll quit jibber jabbering and uh, we'll get to it. All right, before we get too deep into today's video, I wanted to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Vessi. Now, living in Florida, coming up on rainy season, it's right around the corner, you're guaranteed to get your feet soaked fairly often. You go to the store and it's a sunny day, by the time you get there, it's monsooning and it flash floods and the parking lot's got three inches of water. No matter what you do, you are not missing a puddle. When you get out of your vehicle, your feet are getting wet, your day's ruined. Because of that, if I'm going anywhere more than 30 minutes away from the house, I bring at least two pairs of socks because wet feet will ruin my day. I can't do it. It's just the one thing. I just can't handle having wet feet. Vessi solves that problem. These are 100% waterproof while still being super breathable. Another thing I hate as much as wet feet is hot feet and these do not make my feet hot. They are literally the most comfortable shoes I own and they are super easy to clean, which is huge for me because I'm very hard on shoes. I destroy shoes. Shoes are definitely a consumable. So anyway, I wanna show you guys just how waterproof these are. I'm not playing games when I tell you these are waterproof. It feels weird because I can feel the water splashing on my foot like the pressure of it hold on let's see look at that completely dry sock nothing nothing that's uh, I, I it just it blows my mind every time you would not think a shoe like this would be waterproof like i can literally stand here and just pour water on my feet which is awesome too, because when I'm washing a car, I don't want to go change into sandals or flip flops or something just because my feet are going to get wet. And I always get them wet every time that my shoes are wet and my socks are wet. Nope, no more. Feet stay dry. I'm just going to show you guys one more time. Socks still dry. Because of that, because of the fact that I can no longer have wet feet, I don't even have to bring spare shoes and socks anymore. I mean, at Clutch Kickers, we literally had to go buy shoes because we got stuck in a tornado and everyone's feet got soaked. If I'd had my vesties back then, it wouldn't have been a problem. But they have become my go-to shoes. They are just the shoes by the door. They're, I mean, they're, they're literally the perfect everyday shoe. They replace so many other options. They do it all, all in one. So I don't even have to worry about having multiple shoes to pick from. But if you're interested, check my link down in the description. Use my code Taylor with two R's. Don't forget that part. T-A-Y-L-O-R, R, second R. Don't forget to get $25 off a pair of Vessi shoes and they have tons of shapes and styles to choose from and they're all waterproof, which is incredible. Anyway, enough about that. It's time to get back to the projects, the task at hand. We got a lot to get done. Let's get to it. All right, so this is roughly what we're going for. Top, side, bottom. Whip out the CAD. So 
I used to use cardboard boxes for our CAD, cardboard aided design. A lot of people recommended this, which is called RAM board. Um, it is a little better in the sense that you can bend it and it holds its shape, but it comes on a roll. So it's not as nice as dealing with a flat, uh, already flat piece of cardboard. All right, so we're gonna try to do this similar to how I did the expansion tank and basically make the bulk of it besides the back and the bottom out of two pieces with a bend on each one. So the be at the top and the side and the front and the side. So we gotta take that into account when we draw this up. All right, there's our base shape. Let's see if it fits. A glove, aside from this wiring harness that's in the way, our excess. All right, I think we need to trim, well, maybe not. All right, I think I'm gonna redesign this slightly. Instead of having the curve here at the front, we're gonna have it curved down like this one does. And it'll just kind of be floating in the back on that, that side. It'll be kind of wasted space under it, which is good, because we can hide some wiring back there if we need to. And then that way it'll look more uniform at the front. So, let's do this again. All right, this is take two. It's a little wonky looking just because it's all bent weird, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just for fitment. Oh yeah, that's dialed. That'll work perfect. All right, now we need to make this part out of uh, some aluminum. <laughs> Dude, table A1. Just being able to tweak everything just a little bit to line up perfect and clamp it in that position. So sick. Oh man. But yeah, so let that chill for a second and then we'll see how it fits. 
and then start moving on. All right, moment of truth. Oh, perfect. Literally perfect. Could have stood to be a little bit narrower, just so it matched the other one better, but. about it boys sweet it's a shame this got all messed up i wanted to put tape on it before i cut it but i am out of masking tape All right, so obviously this is a curve. We're not gonna be able to really get that with just one bend, but it's kind of got two arches. It bends up slightly here and then it gets more aggressive here. I think if we can get the gist of the bend, we might be able to get it close. Worst case, we can recess it like I did with the expansion tank uh, and it won't matter, but we might as well try to make it nice, you know? So that's bend number one, that's bend number two. Let's see if we can't make this work. I mean, for the tools we have to work with, that's pretty reasonable. I've cut it a little long intentionally just so I could trim off the excess once we had the final shape determined, but that's pretty solid. All right, so we've got the basic shape knocked out. If we weren't doing anything else, we could just tack this up and weld it up but we have some stuff we need to add on the inside to prevent this catch can from filling up. Now, we have other methods that we're gonna try to prevent it from filling up, but this is gonna be kind of a double insurance policy to make sure we don't have any issues. It's really common with catch can setups if you don't have the right baffling or you don't have any baffling, it'll just fill up. People think the engine's blowing up or something, but it's really just, the oil can just splash out. And you'd be surprised how much oil can splash out of a valve cover through a line and into a catch can. So. The goal is to try to prevent any sort of oil splashing in, just get the vapors and the miscellaneous stuff. So, let me show you what I have in mind. All right, I wanna figure out where I'm putting my AN bungs first. All right, well, I had to go to the parts store to get these, even though I ordered them on Amazon. So my Amazon order got delayed and they didn't have two of the same either. All right, so basically what we're doing with these, one is gonna go on the inside here. We're gonna have a plate welded over it with some holes. So the oil has to pass through this. So oil can't just splash in. It's essentially our baffle. Now you can still get air through this very easily, you won't be able to get liquid through it as easily. It'll still go through it, but not as easily. And then one will be on the top. Obviously we gotta cut these down with a plate as our breather. So I gotta decide how I wanna do that part. All right, so that's part one of our baffle and see how that's gonna work. Obviously we need to weld these fittings in. We need to weld as much of this as we can before we, cause we, we're gonna have to put this in before we close it off. So I don't want it to melt. So I'm gonna drill just a series of holes in this just so it can better permeate. It would kind of work this way. It would have to go down through the medium and then in, but 
Ah, we'll put some holes in it, but it's really tight in there. I want it to be as tight as possible so we can easily just throw some tacks on it and be done. Alright, we got that welded in. Scotch Bright goes back in. Like I said, we'll obviously have to weld these fittings on first. Well, we're gonna try to weld almost everything before we put this in here. I might switch the strategy up a little bit to something that'll be a little bit more durable to heat for that reason, but we'll see. We'll see. Next, we need to build this plate where the other one's gonna go. Uh, but first, we need to do our holes in the top here. We're gonna be a little more strategical about these. Let's try to make it look decent. Well, it took a few tries to come up with something I liked, but I'm good with that. And we'll have the uh, black scotch right here, so it'll kind of blend in. But this is basically just to vent the catch can atmosphere. So we got that sorted. Now we need to build this plate. <laughs> Alright, got both of these plates welded in. Oh, that's satisfying. <laughs> that's so satisfying. Nice and tight in there. So I left the back open and my plan is to weld the plate up to here. Um, and the reason for that is just so we can take this out if we wanted to change it later, but namely just so I can weld it without melting this. So far so good though. Go ahead and weld the fittings on and just keep on trucking I guess. All right, well, what do you know it? My Amazon order that said it wasn't gonna be here got here, so I didn't need to go buy these. I mean, I guess I kind of did because I needed to know the thickness. Um, so I cut one to fit there, but I changed my mind. <laughs> I just, it's gonna melt. It's gonna for sure melt because we've got to weld all the way across here. So what I did instead is packed it with steel wool and you can see, can easily get air and vapor through but harder for stuff to splash through so yeah anyway got that packed in there i think we're good there so i mean we're pretty much ready to weld the box up so i was trying to get those in and fit it up we're gonna have to cut the back plate some now that we have our removable filter slot
made this hand rest. I used to have magnets on the bottom. I think I have some more. Let's let's fix this. I think this is the first project that wasn't intercooler piping that we've done with the new welder. Alright, well it's not 100% everywhere, but that's some of the best uh, aluminum tick I've done in a minute. Now uh, this is the first time I've welded something thicker like this that's not intercooler piping with the new welder, and boy what a difference. Uh, this little section was pretty awkward, I just could not get a good angle at it. No matter, no matter how I set this thing, I just couldn't find a good angle. But it's done, it's welded up. So we need to kind of get it in position and come up with a uh, bracket to mount it. Steel wool's still there and intact. Didn't melt away. All right, so we got two bolts back here. Probably go to those. That's pretty close. It's angled down slightly. In hindsight, I should have gone about a half inch narrower and about a half inch shorter on the bottom. We would have had a lot more leeway, but tried to completely fill the space. So it's a little snug in there. Um, we still need to make a front mount, but I want to go ahead and pull that, pull it back out, weld that mount out, and then worry about the front mount. We'll probably do something off here. Just angle back and throw a rib nut in this spot right here. Easy enough.
right, here's what we've got. Just gotta drill our holes. So the welding goes on because this thing's still pretty toasty, but. Oh no, no, no! Oh my. Should be the final install. I would say she's securely mounted. <laughs> I did at the last minute switch back to the black filter, Scotch Bright. Um, overall, I'm super happy with it. I'm glad the whole design came out good. Trying to make it look random is so hard. Not that this does, but yeah. Anyway, happy with how it came out as a whole. So we will need to weld some fittings into the valve cover here and try to baffle those. I don't think there's gonna be a good spot for us to weld the fitting in and have it baffled. It is crucial. Like if you have any fittings on a valve cover, if there's nothing there and it's just like, you know, you can see right in as like, as if you took the oil cap off, you will fill catch cans. Um, and it should be better with this one. That's why I did the steel wool in it in case we don't have very good baffling in the valve cover. Oil can't splash in, but then it'll get trapped in the line. So you will literally just spit oil out if you don't have good baffling. I see a lot of people do that. They'll throw fittings on uh, a valve cover with nothing behind them and oil, I mean, it's just, it's a hole for oil to fly out of. So anyway, jibber jabbering. I gotta figure out exactly what I wanna do there and then we can build those lines, but I'm really happy with this overall. It's kind of like matching the expansion tank. It's a little smaller, but overall, besides the fact that it would be an old crooked, it's kind of driving me nuts at the moment. I'm sure I'll get over it, A1. But as much as I would like to continue on, knock out the valve cover, get the lines done, etc., we are out of time because I gotta pull the Miata out of the garage, get it washed up because we are taking it to FD Orlando, not to drive, of course, but it's gonna be in the Nitto booth, which is super exciting. So I'm super, super stoked that they asked me uh, to bring the car out. It feels, feels good, I, a Nitto sponsored driver. I think it's it's setting in, you know? It's setting in, pretty cool, man. So anyway, we're gonna take the old Fummins out there. So I gotta get hooked up to the open trailer, get that thing washed, vacuumed. It is uh, pretty nasty, so I'm gonna get to that. Uh, but for now, we're kinda done with uh, progress on the old Sephiro. The last bits of fittings are on the way. When they get here, in a couple days, should have every last thing we need to plumb this car all the way. The only thing we might still be missing is the oil filter relocation, but if I can get the water line stuff done, the power steering done, we can fill it with coolant and go rip it. So uh, hopefully all that stuff comes in, but we'll see. I'm gonna quit jibber jabber and get to work before the sun sets. All right, got the Miata cleaned up, loaded on the trailer. I forget how well this car cleans up still. I mean, it's beat up. She's for sure a 20 footer, but I just forget that it's shiny underneath the dirt. Like the dirt layer you just don't notice is really there because of the paint color. I need to repaint this car soon, especially with that smashed in passenger door there, but I don't know. Anyway, jibber jabbering. Had an FD tomorrow. Uh, so that is gonna be a wrap for now on the K-Swap Sephiro build. Coming to the end of the fab projects. That's, uh, that's my favorite part, but hey. There's always more cars to build. I got a million ideas in here, stuff I want to build. We need to start on the turbo truck. Getting ahead of myself though. Car's not done, so. I'm gonna quit turbo jabbering. I'm gonna sign off. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Goodbye, guys. Those mosquitoes are freaking killing me.